everybody. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, my next guest has starred on Broadway in Hamilton and The Great Comet. You can now watch her in The Gilded Age. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Danae Benton. Nice to it see you again. Get Thanks old. for coming back. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Nor does it get warm. You might want to put that over your shoulders again at some point. It's all old glam, Hollywood. <laughs> I love it. I love a little burst of sunshine in the winter here. Thank Thanks. You. Now, um, you're star in the Gilded Age from the creators of Downton Abbey over on HBO, and uh, it was it was supposed to start like one week. After the pandemic began, you guys were all ready to go. Literally, principal photographer was supposed to start. March seventeenth, that so, Tuesday. Yeah, <laughs> twenty twenty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the lost. Yeah, the lost time. How does it feel to have finally have it out there after all this wait? I mean, it's it's been better than I could have imagined. You know, obviously the world went through so many changes during that time mm -hmm. that I was like, is is anyone going to want to watch us be like shady in corsets? And it turns out <laughs> they really do, and I'm really Who glad. Love? A little shady corseting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, uh, the uh, the incredible Audra McDonald yes. uh, plays your mom yes. in this. And I got to imagine, hard not to be an Audra McDonald fan. Were, were you before you worked with her? I mean, yes, it's mm -hmm. a law. You must be, especially <laughs> if you yes. are especially a black girl in musical theater. Yeah. It's, it's not negotiable. Mm -hmm. Had you met her before you did this? I, you know, I didn't. When I was nominated, I, she hosted an event that I got to attend, and mm. I, I saw her from across the room. I was, like, working up my courage, and I just chickened out, and I didn't introduce myself. And I remember I called my mom crying after, and I was like, I, this was my chance to meet Audra McDonald. I'm never going to meet her, and I don't know why I chickened out, and the, the moment's gone, and um, now I get to cry in her lap as my mom. <laughs> Audra, and I had no clue. Um, it's so, it's, I, the so why'd you chicken out? I want to know why you chickened why? out. Because I've know. chickened out before. I'm curious why you chickened I out. I think it's hard to meet your heroes, like someone you've looked up to for so long. You, like, want the moment to go perfectly. At sure. least I do. And I, my one goal with this role was I really wanted black women to feel proud when they saw Peggy. And the fact that I get to do it alongside a black woman who made me feel so proud is, like, it's just kind of beyond. Well, we have a clip here of the two of you together. Do uh, you need to set this up in some way? Tell us what's going on. So Peggy has had a lot of family drama the whole season that you don't quite know about. But um, her and her mom, kind of, her mom like refuses to let the bond go. And mm -hmm. so this is a moment where it seems like Peggy might be letting her back in okay. with some rules. Jim? But what about you? That's what I want to know. There's a lot in your future if you only get out and make it happen. I just know it. You remind me of Mrs. Van Ryan. Yeah, if that's true, then I respect her for it. But what will you do? Stay here, if you'll let me, and continue with my work at the Globe. We may have a problem with your father. Oh, I can always move out again. There's no need for fight and talk just yet. I'll say nothing unless he's looking for a fight. But if he isn't, I'll give him one. Perhaps, but right now, could you put down your sword and have some coffee? <laughs> Now, can you explain this photo to me? Because I'm curious what your original goals were. Um, clearly, you always uh, had a love of the limelight, but it, what's going on here? Uh, <laughs> Was this a career I, aspiration? I went through a very serious country music cowgirl phase. Leanne Rhymes was my whole jam. Um, wow. Yeah, I just felt like I could be anything. And at the time, cowgirl was the goal. Wow. Um, I spoke of it in, in um, a beauty pageant once. Is that what this is? Because I've got this. I wasn't sure. <laughs> yes. That is. OK, so here you are. You also, you were, then was the next dream to be a beauty queen? What well, OK, this? they're kind of connected. The, the, <laughs> this took place at a, at a mall in Orlando. It was called the Little Miss Sunburst pageant. Sure, Yes, sure. the sun. We all know it. There's a theme. Yep. Um, and I, uh, my mom put me into it. My, my grandma, my cousins, my aunties all came. And I think I was the only little black girl in the pageant. And all of the other girls, apparently, we were four. They went up and they were like, what do you want to be when you grow up? 
up and they're like, oh, I want to be a princess. And my mom said, like, I strutted across the stage and I was like, I want to be a cowgirl. <laughs> and, <laughs> and my grandma tells the story all the time. And then apparently when it was time to announce the winners, all of the other little girls were like sitting in their seats and I was like standing by the stage, just like ready for my name to be announced. <laughs> and then it was, and I won. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so that's a form. So, yes, yeah, so that's these a were form connected. of performance right yeah. there. But when, because a, a lot of people when they're younger perform on of some course. level. When did it go from like, I enjoy this to this is what I want to do? You know, I dealt with a lot of self doubt just around not quite feeling like I belonged and stereotypes around what black girls can and can't do. And so I felt like my voice wasn't good enough. I was just judging myself and um, just this. The summer before my senior year of high school, I did a production of Aida, and I was like... Wow, that's not easy singing. No, it's not. I was stressed, and I listened to Heather Headley nonstop. And I, I did it, and I just felt this burst of confidence, and I was like, okay, Mom and Dad, actually, I want to go to drama school. And they were like, duh. Like, why do you think we can pay for all these voice lessons and driving you across <laughs> the world? And so it was like they kind of knew of my dream before I really caught up to it, and so I, I felt really supported to just take the leap and I'm thankful I did. If there was any part that you could just pick right now to play, other than the part you're playing right now, what would it be? If you could cast yourself. Oh my gosh. Appropriate or not. Like, in other words, like, no one's ever gonna cast me. Because I want to be right. Judas, I want to be Judas and Jesus Christ Superstar, but I'll never be cast <laughs> as Judas and I Jesus see. Christ Superstar. I see, don't ever say never. I thought never. I'd never play a Russian countess, and like, here we are. There it is. You know? But, um, Tomi Adeyemi is turning her incredible book series, Ch Children of Blood, Love and Bone. No, mm. Children of Blood and Bone. Yes. Into a film series, and it's like, West African mythology, it's giving like, I don't know, Harry Potter meets our own African folklore, and I'm like, just let me hold a staff in the background. I, well, good luck. It's giving good luck. everything, yeah. <laughs> this so, is the first audition. Whoever's casting yes, this, please, there she is. Please, anyone, right I'm there. here. But it's, yeah, Thank some you so fantasy. Much for being here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> New episodes of The Gilded Age air Mondays on HBO. It's the Nate Benton, everybody. We'll be right back.